preaching be done decently and in order and without just tons of interruptions. Look at verse 34. And this is one of those areas where being an old-fashioned church, has, you know, the, the, modern, the modern society has a problem with that. Because the Bible says, which is our authority, by the way, the Bible says, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Now, this is not talking about their culture. This is not saying they had some law in those days and that's why they need to keep silence, just some, some external law by some Pharisee or by some governor or whatever. This is scripture in God's word saying, let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Now, first of all, there's a good reason for this, but even if you don't understand the reason, it doesn't matter if we're looking at God's word and trying to understand you know, and trying to just model our church after what, the, what God's word says. You don't have to understand all the meanings behind it. You have to obey it. And that is what we do here. That is why we will never have a woman come up and preach a sermon. We'll never have a woman come up and present even present their, you know, their missionary thing or the things that they're doing, right? Anything that, that's, you know, we're going to stay as right on this as we possibly can. The Bible even says in the next verse, look at verse 35, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So even when women don't understand something, you know, it's one thing if a guy says, but what about this? Or so, you know, in the middle of the sermon, he says, the women, it's not permitted. Now, I don't think we should just be having a Q&A, as I mentioned earlier in the church. But this is obviously talking about someone who doesn't understand something. And you say, look, even if you don't get it, if something's going over your head, if you don't understand, don't slip up your hand and ask a question. Why? Because it's not permitted for women to speak in the church. This is the way that we operate our church here. Is it because we hate women? No, it's because we love God's word. That's as simple as that. We love women. We don't degrade women here. Right? Hopefully the women here will testify that. We're not, we're not putting women down. But what we are going to do is we're going to follow the way that God says the church ought to be run. And if God says that women are permitted to speak, guess what? We're going to listen to that. We're going to stick to that. And I don't care if people want to call me misogynist. I don't care if people want to say, you know, we're, we should go back to the Stone Ages. Whatever. Doesn't matter to me. You call me whatever names you want to call me. I'm going to follow God's word and I'm going to try to follow it to a T the best way that I can. Look at verse number 36. What? Can, and you know, and by the way, before we even get off of that, it says if they will learn anything. So this is obviously talking about, because people want to nitpick and say, oh, so then should women not be singing songs then in the service? This is talking about when the learning is going on, if they will learn anything at home. The singing, everybody's singing praises unto God. That's biblical, that's scriptural, that could be found, I could prove that to you from the Bible, that the whole congregation is singing unto the Lord. That is scriptural. But when it comes to time to learn, when it comes to the time of someone getting up to preach, because that's in the context what we were just talking about. When you've got two or three people, let, let them preach one by one, and let the others remain silent, and he follows that up immediately, but let your women keep silence in the church because it's not permitted for them to, uh, to speak. It's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. So that being said, this also goes for the amens. Now saying amen in church or that's right or, or you know, you got it, whatever, you know, when men, when men are given their, their approval, they're saying, yes, amen, that's right. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that in church. I think that's great. I think it's encouraging. It's something that you're public saying, you know what, I agree with that. That's a good message. That's the truth. And other people, you know, that could, honestly, that is something I, I think that is good to have in church for men to be confirming what the preacher's saying. Because you know what happens when you have, because we don't want people to come in here and hear a, a hard sermon or strong doctrine and then think that, wow, this guy's nuts. I feel sorry for all the rest of these people here. Right? Like, like, are these people just getting, well, you wouldn't have people confirming and saying, amen, that's right. When the pastor preaches something about, you know, the, that sodomites ought to be put to death because that's what God's laws say, say amen to that and let other people know. So when you got any people coming in, look, most of the people here, you're all used to this type of stuff and, and you get it. 
But it's good to have that in you, men, to be an encouragement to say, yes, that's right. I, and obviously only if you agree with it. <laughs> but you, you say the amens when you agree with what's being said, especially when it's something that other people might be thinking, oh, man, that sounds kind of radical. Is that really true? Amen. It is true. That's the purpose of that is, is to, to give that encouragement. Let other people know. Yeah, this is, you know, especially other, God, other people that people know, hey, this guy really reads his Bible a lot. And he's saying amen to what the pastor's preaching. And, you know, it's, that's giving another witness to what's being said. 